Rauri Waititi. Hea hato whakautu. Ki ngā rōpū e mahi ana mō ngā tamariki rawakore e karanga ana kia heke te whika o ngā tamariki rawakore mā te pene, mā te hiki i te whiwhinga pūtea, mā te ngāwari i te hokokai me te māwiwi ārai. Uh, is, is the member going to translate that or does he want to give uh, the Minister a moment to uh, receive that translation? A point of order, Mr Speaker. No, it's only, only a question. It wasn't in any kind of a direction. Absolutely not. OK. <laughs> you can tell me in English or you can... Uh, well, the, uh, the question doesn't need to be answered if the Minister doesn't, or Prime Minister in this case, doesn't feel like he wants to answer it. So, uh, does the Minister want to have another Supplementary. Question? We've got a question. Answer the question. I just wish that the courtesy of the House would apply so that the person asking the question, Mr Speaker, point of order, so that the person asking the question also had the, the comfort that the people who are watching on television also are part of this parliamentary debate. That's what a democracy is called. It's not about, it's not about just about 5%, it's about the other 95% who pay as well. It's called one people, one country. Now back to my point. If the member is concerned, if the member is concerned about the cost of living, no, no, no. On the marae, Megan, you keep quiet. Right? You do. Well, he knows that. He keeps quiet too. You don't shout out like some bunch of clowns at university. Yeah, just hang on. Yeah. And that member has asked the question, he deserves an answer, and I'll give it to him. If the member's concerned about the cost of living, then that is the greatest concern of this government as well. We went at the last election, it was a massive issue. Behind, and just behind it was crime and lawlessness and Maori gangs by the same way. But the cost of living can only be addressed by dealing with the causes of it, and the causes of it are number one centre and the focus of this government going forward. Point of order, Mara well, David. Was that a point of order? No, that was an answer. He, made he raised it. a point no, of no, order. I'm sorry. He made it. Sorry, hang on. The acting Prime Minister made it very clear when I called him on a point of order, he said, no, it is an answer. And that's how we progressed. Debbie Narumo, back up. Kia ora. Point of order. Um, with respect to the House and to everyone watching, can we please seek clarity from the Speaker? Are our questions in te reo no longer going to be answered by ministers if they choose not to use the interpreter? That's a, a really important um, subject that we're looking for clarity, please. I can't answer that question for ministers. The provision is made here for... Um, provision is made here for uh, the translation. A minister decides whether or not an answer can be given, and there are very clear outlines and standing orders as to how they might make that decision. Point of order. The questions yeah, have been. The questions were for the deputy prime minister. Hmm. So I respect that ministers may choose to do what they want to, but this is a question that would have gone to the prime minister who isn't here. So can I seek clarity again? Is it the Deputy Prime Minister, the Prime Minister or the Government that's making this decision before us today? Because it is a big decision. No, no, no it's, it's not. It's straightforward. All Ministers are part of the Government, including the Prime Minister, whether they're Acting Prime Minister, Deputy Prime Minister or a Minister. And it, it is under the standing orders very clear how they may or may not answer a question. Uh, uh, next in line was Malama Davidson. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Um, genuine and important conversation happening right here. Are we to believe then, then it simply becomes a choice for a minister to not answer a question given that te reo is an official language, similarly to New Zealand's signed language? Um, I, I understand the point that Mr Bishop is trying to make that yes, I'd to be open to the person asking the question to repeat the question so that we all have time to pick up our translators, agree. But are we to understand that it is simply a choice not to ask a question that is asked in an official language of this country? Now, I think the member confuses two things. Now, one is there's no question that uh, Te Reo is an official, official language in this country. The fact that it is not uh, a language that is uh, shared with any fluency by a large number of members of the House is neither here nor there. Uh, the use of it is permitted. When it comes to the answer of a question, uh, it's nothing new in this. It has always been the case. In fact, uh, 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 Speaker's ruling 1994 makes it very clear uh, the, the, the parameters for ministers able to uh, decide not to answer a question. Point um, order, with respect, uh, Itapika, 
Um, just again to seek clarity from this party's perspective and the 70 per cent of our population who are under the age of 40 who kōrero te reo Māori, if we need to bring about a different practice, because this is a practice that we've had since we came in three years ago to Uruoa had, um, that we've had to party Māori and joy and other members across the House. Is the decision today, and it may need to go out for reflection for the Business Committee, that we need to indicate when we're transferring language, or is there going to be a different set of protocols no, applied around the No, it's not a decision that's been made here at all. I've said that I'll reflect on how we might make things move more, work more smoothly, because you might notice that most of the people in this House are not reflective of that 17 per cent in age, if nothing else. Uh, and so uh, if we are to, to get, a, get answers to questions, we need to have something that, that works, and that's certainly my desire. Madam Davidson, point last point of order on this matter. Thank you, Mr Speaker. It's just in relation to 1993, our uh, Speaker's rulings. Yep. It's very clear that where the question is clear, there is an expectation that ministers will answer it unless they consider it not to be in the public interest to do so. So I'm just seeking clarification on uh, whether it is not in the public interest or what is the ruling that you are calling no. to allow ministers to have that choice. So the, ru the ruling stands, but it's not for the Speaker to determine uh, the, the interpretation of that ruling. So we're now, do, do we have another supplementary on this question?